o te iti e te rahi, tēnā tātou katoa, ka mihi ki te kaupapa e te wāna tēnei rangi. Ko Tony, tōku ingo anō, te whanganui a tāra ahau. Uh, I've lived most of my life in New Zealand and given plenty of presentations, but I've never started out one in Te Reo, so thank you so much to this audience for finally giving me the courage to do so. Um, you know, my purpose in this talk is to get you all thinking about how we can grow a more prosperous and sustainable advantage for New Zealand through deep technology companies, and I want to do that through the lens of talking about my, a little bit about my own experience at 8i. 8i, um, 8i's technology is truly groundbreaking and world leading. Um, it, what it does is it allows real people to be recorded and turned into holograms for virtual reality and also augmented reality. So virtual reality, fully immersive digital worlds where you can be in a completely other space and encounter other people and have an experience with a digital person that's much more close to the experience of real life than it is to watch a flat video. And augmented reality, technology through which we can bring digital assets, digital people, here into our real world. So uh, this is, I mean, what you need to know is that this is a really freaking hard problem. It's kind of been a holy grail problem of computer graphics, computer vision, for many decades now. Um, but ADI is the company that's really taken this type of technology to the next level on the world stage, and we believe its time has come. It's tough because you've got to do a great job of capturing a performance from all angles and reassembling that back together, but it's also a really tough problem because you end up with great orders of magnitude of, of data much larger than regular video, and so you have to deal with the problem of compressing that down so that it can go through our pipes and our internet and our mobile networks to actually reach people, because what good is media if it can't reach people? This is what it looks like. We put someone on a stage, we record them, we take that data, apply all sorts of algorithms to it, and then we can deliver that performance back up uh, into virtual spaces or real spaces. It's a process called volumetric capture, and the reason we're doing it is because we want um, the coming world of three-dimensional computing where digital realities are going to have many more of the dimensions of real life and not just the flat screen to be a world populated by humans and not just CG creatures and be a place for human communication, storytelling and all sorts of useful applications to take place. I'm going to just share one application with you. Glad we've got some space geeks here. And um, this is something we made with Buzz Aldrin. Virtual reality just gives a sense of participating, being right there in an enlightened, involved, exciting way. That's the future that I want to see. Being able to experience Buzz's vision in virtual reality allows people to actually be on Mars and see Buzz's vision for how we're going to colonize Mars. I think what's so exciting about this project in particular is that we're creating nearly photorealistic holograms of historical icons. People can interact with him as though he's there in a way that was never possible before. Leaving an image behind for other people to see is like uh, eternal life in a way. Fuzz is a fun time. In that video, you can see him kind of slapping his butt and going like this. He's saying, get your ass to Mars. So we're helping him <laughs> spread that message. It's what he wants us all to do. So since we started doing this three years ago, we've captured all sorts of people doing all sorts of things. They could be acting, playing, educating, training, or sharing some kind of important message. In addition to making um, it, this available through high-end virtual reality headsets, we're also making it something that can reach people through mobile devices, so a way that we can access not just one million people, but hundreds of millions of people all over the world. One way we've done that is by creating, you know, making all of this technology 
able to be distributed over mobile network and playback on a consumer electronic device as light as a mobile phone. We launched our app called Holo this year, which is the first kind of app of its time allowing human holograms to be played in the world uh, using mobile phones. Um, Holo has been downloaded uh, by over a million people um, and we've placed many, many millions of holograms around the world doing that in, in 180 countries, uh, including more than a million Spider-Mans. Um, quite a few MTV Moonmans <laughs> and uh, really like a bunch of other stuff and people, consumers take this, enjoy it, they create their own mixed reality type of experiences and then go on to share them. But we see this uh, mobile platform as really being a technology platform that we can offer to other people. At, at our core we're a deep technology company and we want to put this content into the hands of app developers, content creators and others to use. So there are lots of different applications that this can be applied to, whether it's connected with sports, it's connected with museums and education, exercise, fashion, the list sort of goes on. So that's what we're doing, it's pretty cool and pretty hard <laughs> to do as well. Um, you know, I really, really the reason I started working for ADI when it started out is because I've been thinking a lot about, you know, what is it that we can do to transform um, New Zealand and the New Zealand economy uh, in a way that's sustainable and is not going to keep taking away from our natural environment, but instead really enrich the skills and intelligence of people um, for us to share with the world. And I really believe that deep technology companies are a key part of us doing that. And I believe that networks like EHF and Kia have got a really important role to play in helping us do that here in New Zealand because we are a relatively young ecosystem when it comes to um, startup technology companies. We, you know, we've got really a couple of generations of that and we're also a small place. So those things come with some real advantages, which I want to talk about, but also some gaps that we need your help to, f to fill. First thing I want to talk about is talent, or as I prefer to call it, people. Um, you know, for any company, we, um, we know that people are normally one of the most important assets that a company has, and that's certainly true in a deep technology, research-intensive company. We need these people are really everything that we have, their ideas and their minds. Um, ADI is a company of about 75 people, of which more than 45 are in, in Wellington. And to do what we do, we really need to attract people with some quite deep specialisation, very sophisticated engineering and mathematics. Um, so we are looking, f um, doing this in New Zealand, we've really been able to successfully access a lot of great graduates, um, mostly at the undergraduate and master's level, not so much at the PhD level. Um, through what has been succeeded in the past in our ecosystem, we've got lots of great general software developers, great cloud computing experts, mobile developers, and at least some areas of expertise. Um, so we have all of that here to tap into. Um, it's been growing in New Zealand. Um, but we also need um, a lot of very specialised computer graphics uh, expertise, computer vision expertise, Fortunately for us at 8i, we've been able to tap into what has been attracted to New Zealand and to Wellington um, through the film industry, which really is an absolutely world-class global hub of specialist talent uh, that I believe we can do even more to capitalise on in New Zealand. It's been a real point of leverage for us. Um, but in addition to that, we've needed to attract people here from overseas. And New Zealand has got some absolutely wonderful strengths when it comes to doing that if you're building a business here. Um, one of those is that people love to live in New Zealand um, and they love to live here because of our environment, because of our free and open society, because of our culture, because of the kind of lifestyle that we enable. So it's important to recognise that and, and just, just one more really important reason that we protect all of that. 
Um, other great things about bringing people here is that you, we have got the support of the government to do so. If you're bringing people to work on innovation, you can help access funds through Callaghan Innovation. Immigration has been fantastically flexible in working with us to make us an accredited employer to help bring highly skilled people here um, in, a, in quite a seamless way. Um, so those things are all real strengths, but we really have had to look abroad um, to get people. We've had a lot more success as well, I would say, in attracting subject matter expert individual contributors than we have in attracting leaders, like organisational leaders, mm -hmm. and that kind of management capability is a known gap in the New Zealand economy. So again, it's like wonderful to have the EHF community here, people who have experienced what it is like to grow these fast growing organisations or work in bigger organisations. We really need you to help bring and build that muscle uh, here into New Zealand. Another advantage I would mention is retention is great. Once you once you come up with a really cool thing to work on and you kind of bring the people to the island paradise and um, they really start enjoying it and your company is one of the coolest ones to work at and Google and Apple aren't next door to sort of poach them off you within 18 months. Um, that's a really, really amazing thing and especially, again, important for a deep technology company where you've got to keep building and, and keep that knowledge that resides in people. So let's have more of that. Um, oh yeah, and these are the type of people we have managed to attract from 8i to some of the places that they've come to, many of them coming here to New Zealand to work on our projects, Sony, Pixar, Google, Digital Domain, Apple, AT&T, Bell Labs to name a few. Uh, the next part that I want to talk about is access to capital. Uh, the New Zealand sort of venture capital market is evolving really quickly at the moment. I've, I've noticed it even in sort of the four years that I've been asking them for money. Um, but it is still relatively young and relatively thin, as you can see from this diagram. There's not, it doesn't really warrant a dot on the map. Uh, I think someone said yesterday that the venture capital market in New Zealand is about $100 million and um, it would take about half of that to have funded 8i up to this stage. So we need to, you know, for deep technology businesses like ours, um, you need to connect to offshore, offshore capital. Again, something that I know that the EHF group is going to be really valuable in helping us do. But also, I would just say, like, that is hard. Like, when you're, when you're building a business from New Zealand, you are going to have to make those connections. You are sort of an extra step removed, so it's so important to work through networks like this to really connect into the places um, that you need to be. And actually, it, it's through uh, events like New Frontiers that we, for example, met Scott Nolan several years ago, and Scott has been really, really instrumental in introducing us to um, the American venture capital market as well as talent and skills that we can we can build on here, so we just need more of that. And I think that just goes to show like, what a small number of talented and well-connected individuals can do to really help us. But again, it is hard to be offshore, um, to be doing that from offshore. And we've um, managed to connect with this really, really wonderful cast of, of investors. And I think unlike probably a little what was available to us here in New Zealand, this is smart capital for us too. They've got a much better idea of where our technology can go, the markets that we need to put it into and what else we can do to make it succeed. Downside of them is that um, of the investors on our board, Scott is the only one to have ever visited us in New Zealand and we go to LA for board <laughs> meetings or, or to New York. So again, it's just, it's just um, a bit of a mixed picture and um, we should bring more investors down here more often. Um, the final challenge that I want to talk about, and again, it's both a strength and a challenge, is that um, you know, for deep technology, your market's not always in New Zealand. And for us, that meant having to grow our company from New Zealand uh, into international um, offices had to happen really, really early. Um, it, you know, when you're building something like this from New Zealand, you don't sort of have a market of 300 million people on your doorstep that you can just spend a few years 
working with and perfecting it with before you have to take that big leap of kind of exporting your company to another market. Um, it means that we're thinking global right from the start. Uh, but for us, you know, we started out in May 2014 with six people. Um, it was only sort of six months later that we were into, the, into LA with our first three staff there. Um, by the end of the next year, um, our team in New Zealand was 35. We had, had an office in Seattle as well with three and, and 18 in LA, and we've now got 30 people um, in the United States all up. Uh, and what this, what this kind of means is that when you're kind of like much younger and still trying to figure things out, you have to work a lot harder to overcome all of that communication over here. Do you have to deal with it without being able to get into a room nearly as often as you'd like, not only to talk about ideas, but to build trust and to build those personal relationships. Um, so we have to come up with all sorts of creative ways that you can can do that better and be be deliberate about the type of culture you're bringing and the way that you can talk about that in your company to help to help counterbalance that. Of course, the flip side of it is that there are just great strengths in being two, in these two different markets with different people bringing to the company what it needs in the right place at the right time. I think I'll leave it there um, just with an invitation to talk more, I mean, talk more with me or talk more with others about um, these kind of key issues that I've raised and how you see through your role here in New Zealand or in your own businesses and ventures, things that you contrib can contribute to these problems. I know this group can, can really do a lot um, and it will be very exciting to see more and more deep technology companies find their home here in New Zealand. Thank you. Thank you.